we just kind of give you an idea where creatine's going. So if you take a look at all the most recent studies, and this is all the way through now, in health, including brain, so these are clinical uses. None of you are going to be using it for any of these things. And any of you that may be on this call that are new, uh, if you're interested in anything that's going on with creatine today, I uh, cited the main source for this information that is in the uh, PDSRG document that I created. Uh, and that is called, it's an article could be called Beyond Muscles and the Untapped Potential of Creatine. So again, if you want more on creatine and health. So again, look, look at some of these things here because, you know, obviously creatine is very high in the central nervous system. So that's why it is studied in and may provide benefits to specific health conditions, including improvement in neurological and cognitive function. So you're talking about neurological disorders and trauma. And if you, uh, a Rollins review uh, on creatine supplementation on cognitive function showed that higher brain creatine is associated with improved neurophysical performance, including cognitive processing. So, and of course we know creatine supplementation can increase brain creatine and phosphor creatine. The other one here may be beneficial for, uh, there's a couple of studies here that showed that women under certain conditions such, such as depression, so there, there's a whole application in the female population that may be uh, found out for creatine and health. Improved vascular function, protection against muscle wasting in the older population, of course, and improved bone remodeling in the elder population. So these are the things from a clinical standpoint that are being studied. And again, that, it's here just to kind of tell you that this could be, you know, creatine may be something of the future in, you know, sports nutrition is the new healthy aging. 